All right, this is a video on polynomial functions, and we'll start with an introduction and then do a few different solved examples. So you've actually studied specific sorts of polynomial functions before. Those are linear functions and quadratic functions, but today we're going to um, make that idea more general and look at more um, generalized forms of polynomial functions. And so first what I'd like you to do is actually look at this data table that I have on the screen and maybe think about patterns that you might that you might see in it. I have an x column 0 through 5 and a y column with the number starting at 6 and then eventually getting up to 56. I think you can see a couple things. I think um, one thing that stands out to me is the numbers are all the y values are all even. Um, you can see that the y values though start decreasing getting down to negative 4 and then they start increasing from there and so you know very roughly you might have you you have you have sort of a pattern where things decrease and then start increasing but but we're not quite sure um, what's happening on on either side of this maybe this is a uh, um, maybe this is a parabola maybe it's um, Maybe it's a different sort of a pattern, who knows? But let's take a look at it. I'll erase away my little graph here, but let's take a look at it. What I actually have already done is I've analyzed the differences a little bit, okay? So whenever I see a, a, uh, a sequence of data like this, I start thinking about, you know, what's the difference between six and zero? And it drops by six. Um, 18 to 56 is an increase of 38, okay? If I was dealing with a linear function, I would expect all of these numbers to be the same and that would in um, that would probably represent my slope but those numbers are not all the same and so then I found the differences of the differences and those are these purple numbers right here and again they're not all the same um, if they were they would represent a quadratic function but let me find the differences of the differences of the differences so the third set of differences and let's see what we get here um, I get a plus six another plus six another plus six so um, I, I found I found a pattern there I found that if I find three sets of differences on the third set of differences I find constant a constant um, sequence of plus six this is actually going to be a third degree or cubic pattern so there's some sort of an x cube probably happening inside inside this pattern Okay, or inside the rule for this pattern. And I will leave this as a challenge for you to find the rule if you'd like. All right, but let's get into a little bit of a, um, a little bit more of a definition and introduction to some terms. So a third degree function, a, a function with an x cubed in it is an example of a polynomial. And I have um, some information here for you. General form of a polynomial. I have an example of a polynomial in general form that I'm highlighting in yellow right here. What's most important for you to realize are a couple things. First, there are a sum or differences of separate discrete monomials. So for example, we call this a monomial, just x to a power, to an integer power, and then perhaps being multiplied by a constant. So here's another mono monomial, x to the one, and then multiplied by five. And then if we add a bunch of those together, we get a polynomial, okay? Poly meaning many, mono meaning one. So here's an example of a polynomial. It is in standard form where we have our um, exponents in decreasing order, okay? So there is actually a hidden exponent of one with that 5x term, and there's actually a hidden x to the zero right here with the constant term, the minus one. is You could think of it as minus one x to the zero. There's no quadratic term, there's no x squared, and that's fine, um, but we typically want to express our polynomials in decreasing order or descending order of exponents. There are a variety of vocabulary terms we use to describe polynomials, linear, quadratic, cubic, quartic for first degree, second degree, third degree, fourth degree, etc. And by degree, we're just talking about the value of the highest exponent. So the, the example I gave you is a fourth degree polynomial, okay? Um, and so that's what I mean. And if I'm asking you to classify something by degree, let me move this down, classify by degree, the degree is just the um, highest exponent. Okay, 
So the example I gave above again is a fourth degree polynomial. We could also classify by number of terms and some vocabulary terms here for you are monomial, binomial, or trinomial for one, two, or three terms. This example I'm giving you is actually a four term binomial or four term polynomial. So there's no special, special name for that. So we would call this a fourth degree polynomial with four terms in it. Some example graphs of polynomials um, that are just um, show, show the range of, of possibility, the range of difference of different sorts of graphs that you can experience. Okay, when you're working with polynomials. So once again, you've already worked with linear and quadratic functions, the lines and the parabolas. We're going to expand our thinking here to think about what we call higher degree polynomials. Okay, so um, some more vocabulary terms. We have um, a term, an idea called end behavior, and we use the word up up to describe if a polynomial starts out on the left pointing up and continues on the right pointing up. We use the term up down to refer to a polynomial that starts out on the left pointing up and, and extends on the right to a downward pointing orientation. And I don't care how many bumps and wiggles there are in between. We're just looking at sort of the extreme end behavior. Down up is some might be something that looks like this, where the polynomial to the left is pointing down, to the right is pointing up, and down, down, hey, maybe a um, upside down parabola or an, a downward opening parabola might have a down, down, or does have a down, down end behavior, okay? So we can describe graphs of polynomials in that way. We can also think about turning points. So in other words, how many um, bends, how many maxima or minima, or how many times the graph changes direction, okay? In sort of an inform, that's an informal way of thinking about it. So um, in this up, up polynomial over in the upper left here, it has three turning points. The up, down parabola, or the up, down polynomial has four. The down, up has two, and the down, down has one. So we can simply count the turning points. And what we're going to see is a pattern like this. So if we have a second degree, third degree, fourth degree, or fifth degree. So a second degree is a, is a parabola. It's going to have one turning point. A third degree can have two turning points. A fourth degree can have three. And a fifth degree can have four turning points. So an nth degree polynomial can have n minus one turning points. That's the pattern we're looking for, okay? And it doesn't necessarily need to have that many turning points, but it can have up to that many turning points. It won't be able to have more, okay? A first degree polynomial, a line, has zero turning points. We can also think about this based on even or odd degree, okay? So, so look at this up above. A second degree polynomial can have up to one turning point, a fourth degree can have up to three. So an even degree polynomial, second, fourth, sixth, etc., it actually has to have an odd number of turning points. Okay, whereas an odd degree polynomial, a third degree, a fifth degree, an eleventh degree polynomial will have an even degree of per or an even number of turning points. Okay, and that's going to help us with the end behavior as well. So uh, if we have an odd number of turning points, that's going to be, um, that means we have an even degree polynomial. And we have those examples right there, okay? So the up, up end behavior and the down, down end behavior are examples of even degree polynomials. Okay, so in other words, if the, if the end behavior is the same, up, up, or down, down, it's an even degree. And separately, the up, down, or the down, up end behaviors will, are examples of odd degree polynomials. So in other words, if the end behavior is different, so if it starts out coming, going up and ends up going down, so it's up, down, or down, up, it will be an odd degree polynomial. So those are quick, quick things to sort of be paying attention to and, be, um, and that'll help you make some very rough sketches of graphs. So we'll do an example of this right here. Um, 
y equals negative x cubed plus 3x. So this is a cubic binomial, binomial because there are two terms, and cubic because the highest degree is a 3. Okay. When we're making these very initial rough sketches, eventually we'll learn some more strategies, but when we're making these very initial rough sketches, I actually don't care about anything except for the leading term. So I'm going to cross that guy out. So I notice a couple things. I notice that I have an odd degree polynomial, and I also notice that I am multiplying that by a negative one. Okay, let's pretend we just had an odd or an even or excuse me, an odd degree polynomial, so a cubic polynomial. Let's ignore the negative one for now. And think about what happens when x is really, really large positive. If we were to cube that, so in other words, if x is very far in that direction, if we were to cube a huge positive number, we would get a very large y value. Okay, and if we were to um, conversely cube a huge negative number, we would actually get a very small, very big, very, very large negative y value. Okay, so imagine cubing like negative 100. That would be a large negative number. So we have sort of a, think, a sketch of what the graph might look like. It looks like it might be a down-up graph, maybe something like that. However, I am then multiplying that graph by a negative 1. So I have to vertically flip my graph. So let me change that. And I'm going to hypothesize that my graph might have a very, very rough form looking something like that. Okay. The other thing that we can think about when we are graphing is we can um, think about the function as a whole and think about what a y-intercept might be. Okay, So for this one, if we plug in 0 for x, y is 0 as well. So we know that we go through the origin. So let's, let's um, make a hypothesis, a guess about what our, what our graph might look like. And this, again, is very rough. Um, we're just trying to look for general patterns. We know we need a couple turning points, and we know that it's going to be up, down, and behavior because we thought about what the extreme values, when we plug in an extreme value of x, what and y might look like. Okay, so again, just a very, very rough graph. Let's take a look at Desmos and see how we did. And it looks like we actually did kind of reasonably okay, right? It does have that up, down, and behavior, and it does go through the origin. Uh, one of our goals down the road, and this will actually be one of your goals in calculus as well, is to start thinking about what those points might be, the minimum and the maximum values. And then in this class, we'll definitely start thinking about what the x-intercepts might be as well. Okay, so lots of things to think about here, but our goal here was really just to plot a very rough sketch of a graph. So we knew it had up, down, and behavior because it was an odd degree with a negative initial constant term or a negative initial coefficient. Okay, um, And we just thought about plugging in an extreme value of x. And you could literally plug that into your calculator if you want. Plug in 1,000 into your calculator. Do negative 1,000 cubed. Okay, So essentially plug in 1,000 into, into that um, initial term. And you'll get, you should get a large negative number. And that's how we know that, that our parabola or our polynomial is pointing downwards at, to get to 1,000. It has to get to a large negative number. Okay, so you can literally plug in some values as well. Uh, one more example I want to look at, and I've started this one for you, and this connects to the data table that we were looking at at the very beginning. We can be, do some thinking about, um, about what degree the polynomial is. Okay, so I have an example here of some x and y values. Okay, so that's my initial data table right there. And you want to keep in mind that this works as long as your x values are um, consecutive. So we're not skipping any x values. So negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. You know, we're not skipping any x values. And I just found a series of differences, and I just kept finding my differences of my differences, and I'm not quite done yet, but I wanted to show you what we get when we're done. And again, it's very similar to what we did at the very beginning here. So initially, I found these, these differences right here that I'll highlight kind of in gray. 
and I didn't see a pattern with those. And then I found the differences of the differences, and again, there's not much of a pattern going on. But again, once we keep going, the, diff the um, third set of differences, I actually can look ahead and I can see a pattern that's happening here. It looks like all those numbers are separated by 24. So I am going to oops, continue my work here and I can see that these are all plus 24s once I find my fourth set of differences. Okay, so the, um, that final set of differences that I had to get to, they're constant. So what I can tell from this is if um, I had to go one, two, three, four iterations to get a constant set of differences. So this is a fourth degree polynomial or a quartic polynomial. I'll leave it as an exercise to you to actually find the equation if you'd like. Desmos has some tools to do that. Um, but now that we know that it is a quartic polynomial, it should be make it a little bit easier to actually find that equation. All right, we got through it. That was a bit of a long one, but we got through it and that's a good place to stop right there.